live from the Moscone Center in San Francisco, California. It's The Cube at AWS Summit 2015. Okay, hey, welcome back everyone. You're watching theCUBE live in San Francisco. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise, breaking down all the action here in Moscone North with Amazon Web Services, their technical summit. Andy Jassy, the leader, did the keynote. All the top dogs were out here. Customers, use cases, studies, huge news. Again, in the cadence of Amazon Web Services, a slew of new announcements. Here to break it down is the, the team from SiliconANGLE Media and Wikibon The Cube. Uh, our, our guest, David Floyer, our top analyst in the area, and Mark Farley, our distinguished guest on The Cube. Guys, let's break it down. David, good to see you. Mark and I have been, uh, you know, Peppering away, peppering away at the questions of the guests. You've been in the, in the analyst sessions, talking to some of their top dogs, the executives, and also the uh, customers. So what's your take? What's your walk away? What's, your, what, what's the smell in the air? World domination, are they slowing <laughs> down? Are they misfiring? Are they winning? What's going on? So my, my observation is that for the first time ever, they are starting to talk about hybrid clouds as opposed to just one cloud, which is the AWS cloud. And recognizing, perhaps a little grudgingly, but recognizing that they are going to have to work with, uh, with the uh, enterprises, that not everything is going to go to the cloud. Uh, there's going to be some, uh, a lot of it going to the public clouds like AWS, and in that area, they're really streaming ahead. But there are other options such as platform as a service, such as software as a service, and they're going to they are going to have to deal with a hybrid environment. And, and they're putting out how they're going to manage that, how are they going to design systems so that the customer has some degree of flexibility. So they're admitting basically <coughs> hybrid cloud is the, the, the architecture. Uh, yes. They basically are saying. Yes. That, that not everything will be AWS. Yeah, so they, uh, they, they have to, that's their, that's their initial foray into the enterprise. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, yeah. aligning with hybrid, yes. right? <laughs> that's what everyone's yes. talking about. So yes. what do you think's tilting that? Is it uh, just more conversations with customers? Is it competition from Microsoft, or what do you think's well, going on? Well, one of it is the competition from Microsoft, yes. I think Azure has placed itself extremely smartly as a, uh, as a good integration between uh, the data center and the cloud. They really offer a very good service in that area. So Azure has certainly been one of the factors of that. But I think also their own success is another factor. So they've been able to take off the easy pieces onto, the, onto AWS. Obviously, they've taken off so much of development. They've got such great products in that area. It, it, it's almost crazy of anybody to try and replicate on site what they do there. But if they want to go further and take and get a real part of the action of the, uh, the, the, the large enterprise and medium-sized enterprise gold jewels, they're going to have to find a way of migrating stuff slowly and not converting the whole lot to the cloud because there's a lot of interaction in workflows within a large organization. You can't just pull a piece out very easily. You've got to take it step by step, and that means managing it as a hybrid cloud for at least a long time, and probably in the real world forever. So just moving to the cloud is not the answer. That's their old strategy. Hey, we're better in the cloud, just go over here, lower, smaller, faster, cheaper, scale, some management. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. we'll have it every, <laughs> yeah. yes. and for a small startup, and for a small company, great. Yeah, so management's, what I hear you saying, management's a hard game. Yes. That's a managed service between two platforms yeah. is extremely difficult. What you're saying yes. is, they knocked down the low hanging fruit early, yeah. and now that's a little bit more challenging. It's more challenging, they've got to put, and, and they will, they will put in good products and good architectures to do that. Um, and they're going to have to. And, and they'll also realize that Azure is a, is a power out there. 
that also there are going to be a lot of software as a service uh, or organizations. Uh, people like Oracle, people like SAP are not going to allow AWS to go and mop up all of their uh, software uh, revenue. And the revenue is in the software. So long term, their strategy has to be to get into that software layer. Uh, and then they're going to bump very strongly with the, uh, the ISP. So Dave, I got to ask you, do you think Amazon is putting the kind of pressure on the other guys? Um, is, is, the, is the heat in the kitchen really, really hot for Oracle, IBM, HP, EMC, VMware? I mean, how hot are they turning up the competition? And what are those guys, do those guys have to go off their plan? Meaning, does VMware have to do something medieval? like partner with Google on the network <laughs> level, or uh, EMC <laughs> to transform. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, I'm trying to see, know, get absolutely. your take on what the moves I, of the other guys are. I, I, absolutely, and two years ago, uh, EMC, uh, uh, Oracle did not have anything to say at all, and they looked at this train coming at them and they were just like a deer in the headlights. Deer in the train light, headlight, totally, headlights. yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> So, but now they're much more comfortable with this, much more comfortable with adding value on top of it, much more comfortable with putting up their own services, which are cloud services, to provide the sort of uh, uh, variety of services and variety of consumption models that the end users want. So uh, Amazon has absolutely led the way, made the change happen, but when you've got a, a, a heavyweight like Microsoft with very deep pockets, and you've got heavyweights like uh, IBM, and you've got heavyweights like Oracle, they have now... They have muscle. They have muscle. And but let me ask you that question. In. On their muscle piece, yeah. now it's a double-edged sword for Amazon. Their agility and greatness, which by the way, I'm a big fan of Amazon, so yep. just everyone knows I love what they do. I think they're so winning heavily in their, yep. their secretariat, well ahead of other horses yep. at this point. But, Agile can give the big guys some fast movement too. They have muscle. Yep. They might not be moving like on a dime, but yeah. can move pretty fast. Look what Microsoft's done recently, what EMC and VMware are doing. So yeah. they could move faster than they yeah. were in you the know, past. Cheaters are good, but lions are pretty effective as well. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, just a, a, a good strong lion with a bit of muscle uh, is going to actually uh, go take it. Uh, so we fight. expect to see VMware. I mean, yes. who do you expect to see at the table? <laughs> you know, VMware a, for sure. There's obviously VMware Microsoft. for sure. Microsoft is the most interesting. They have, if you look at the Linux versus Microsoft battle, you would have thought that was over a long time ago and then everything was going to Linux. It's very interesting if you look at the data from Oracle, for example, they have an increasing amount running on Microsoft uh, server. And they have, uh, they are very well positioned for this new data center. They've got good products, uh, they've got databases, they've got the middleware, they've got a complete stack of middleware. They can be incredibly efficient. If they can get the speed game going. It, well, yes, that's their challenge. But the new, uh, the, 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 uh, new uh, guy on the top of him, uh, I, I talked to him before he became Who, the- Satya? Uh, Satya, Satya, yes. Uh, I talked to him beforehand, and he was the cloud manager. They know how to move fast yeah, in that area. They are moving fast, but I give Microsoft a ton of props. I love what they're doing. Yeah. Since Bomber's been gone, they've been going all cloud, <laughs> yeah. they've done a lot of open source stuff, donated stuff to open compute, and yeah, we riff on that all the time. However, I have customers telling me directly that Amazon just blows them away performance-wise. Oh, uh, at the moment for doing so, something uh, on the cloud. Uh, specifically on the cloud. They have more services, they have more capabilities. Who does, who's they? AW, so yeah, Amazon. AWS, Amazon. 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 Definitely. But if you look for an end-to-end -end integration of a suite of applications, Microsoft start to look very nice. The system center, they've got the hypervisor, they've got the whole stack. It's the, well, an Office 365. Room. Office, they own Works Office. very well. Yes. Yeah. All right, so Office specialism, guys. I want to go around and get your opinion on this. It, it, it might be that if you can't win the big game and be in the top three in cloud, you got to find specialism. Yeah. So yeah. there's plenty of specialty roles on the information broker cloud. 
that could be a great one for EMC, right? EMC's got a lot of data going on, their cloud needs big data, but they might not be the, their storage, so they store data, so that they're going to be in the data game. Mm -hmm. So they might be a data cloud, I'm speculating. But to lead it on, what do you think? I mean, if you're so not- how, What are the fractures going to be? Yeah, who's well, the top three at this point in, in well, terms of I, picks, in terms of cloud? I, I, the, the way that I'm thinking about this is that you've got, you've got a whole number of, of, of things going on all at the same time. You've got uh, Amazon going on. You've got Flash going on. You've got converged infrastructure going on. All of these things uh, uh, are making a big change. So what is the topology, the fundamental topology that you're likely to see? So if you look at the key issues, you're now going to have much faster I.O. Uh, distances are actually more of a problem. So why not have mega data centers by industry as being the way that the systems of the future uh, attack? Oh, so by vertical, by industry. By the, the data that's relevant for that industry. For example, if you look at SuperNAP out in Las Vegas, they focus on the, the media industry. So, that is a nice model for saying, let's have all the, the clouds providers in that data center, which they are, and uh, let's have the, all of the data for that industry there, and all the services there for that industry, and, and keep that uh, pretty close. So for, for a number of industries, that will be a good model. All right, so I want to pin you down. Right now, if you had to stack rank the top three cloud players, who are they? Oh, there's Amazon, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> there's VMware, a wannabe. <laughs> you think VMware has a cloud or? No, I mean, they've got It's enough. like pre-NBA, it's like yes. pre-PICS. Yes. All right, pretty, right. So it's not like today, they're, they're, it's like. You're there. The, the people that, from, from, a, from a, there's, there's people like uh, um, uh, ServiceNow, there's, uh, which have got very, you very You put them in the top three? Oh, they, they, they are very big uh, in terms of potential, but they're, they're coming at it. The Google, well, obviously Google, Microsoft. Yes. Microsoft, but the interesting ones, I think of the ServiceNows, the Oracles, the, the people that are coming in with a very different view of how a cloud should operate. All right, we're getting, we're getting a lot of music here. You guys okay with the sound? We good? We're good, okay, we got some music in the background. They're kicking off. Um, who do you consider the top three cloud players? The top three are Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, right? And it's interesting, Microsoft and Google can print money. Amazon has a harder time printing money. We, we haven't seen the money yet. We haven't, we haven't seen them. We, have, we, we haven't think seen it's seven million, we're, billion? We're going to see it. We're going to see it soon, and uh, you know, it'll, it'll be interesting. Uh, it's an but, interesting announcement, that, isn't it? Of, yeah, of, yeah. Been forced to at last. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, but, uh, in, it doesn't see, it doesn't seem to be hurting Amazon at all, you know that, that uh, even though even though Google and Microsoft can invest seemingly as much as they want, they're still pretty far behind. Yeah. So the argument that says that you know Amazon might might have a harder time investing doesn't seem to be holding true. Right? And that's that's. I, a I like your analysis. Point. I think it's right on. I think I agree. I agree with your three picks right there. That's I would just say that. Sure. I, I agree. agree with the yeah. three picks, but then I would say okay, let's go look at the at the emerging players. So the game hasn't started yet. It's like Sandlot Ball at this point. Right. IBM, HP, HP just EMC, got out. Yeah. That, no, just public. Yeah. Yeah. They're right. going to go specialize right. in, well, EMC doesn't have a public cloud. They had yeah. some other stuff, but we'll throw EMC in there for data cloud. IBM, a VMware, and you, you call VMware and EMC the same. Would you put that as one or two? Will EMC have a cloud? EMC is VMware, isn't it, in terms it's of value? Uh, so, okay, good. We'll they just call it VMware. <laughs> VMware. So let's take EMC out. VMware, HP, IBM. We already have Microsoft in the top three. Oracle. So if you look at them, the people with, with muscle, SAP, Oracle, ServiceNow, uh, uh, those types Century of Link. players. Yeah, so you those throw types of players. If you throw ServiceNow in there, you throw yeah. the CenturyLink in there. Yeah. So those are the sort of players that have are going to make money in that area from a different direction. Are the telcos screwed in your mind, carriers? I mean, with peering going on, SDN and peering is happening? Well, you know, the telcos I'm being have, dramatic, but I mean... Yeah, the telcos have had been in the position where they should have made money 
from this all the way back for 20, 20, 30 years. They seem to be unable to do it. So they're good at counting seats. They and are the towers very, are being put up. AT and T makes a lot of bank. Absolutely, they're making so much money there. Yeah, my bill went up ever since yeah. I started using Periscope on Twitter. Yeah, uh, but um, <laughs> in fact, we should Periscope this right now. You know, analyst moment. Um, I mean, seriously though. I mean, but they're the service providers are the pipes too. With SDN, we were talking earlier about Google's peering. Startups are coming out on interconnect. A lot of innovation going on at the software layer, at the really core transit. Really interesting if you say, hey, if I can control the transit in and out of private to public clouds and have a public cloud that has private transit, then isn't that a data center? Well, another, I mean, another way of looking at where the data center is going is to say, what applications are going to come in the future which are going to be changing, real changing? So what are the new ones coming in? If you look at Oracle, for example, the database market is, is thinning down. So if you, if you look at what is the potential there, then you're looking at uh, analytics, cognitive computing, areas like that as being what is, gonna, what is going to produce money. So okay. what, are, what do they need to get going? Let's do a final review. We'll get a break because we get, we're getting uh, stuck, on, stuck on time here. A couple key announcements, I'll just run down the news and just get your commentary. Uh, EC2 container service, a little bit Docker action in there, on top of it, full runtime. Elastic file system, I want to get your thoughts on threats to things like Oracle VMware. Uh, Lambda, core, uh, zero admin compute platform, workspaces, and Aurora obviously, with the called <laughs> commercial databases, third of the cost, and obviously the machine learning. So first, that's the announcements. Cherry pick, where's your favorite? I'll start with uh, mine, uh, actually machine learning, but I'll ask you on the elastic storage. An EMC killer? <laughs> huh? Going after block, yes, absolutely. So uh, very important, uh, going away from just uh, the, the old EC2 uh, model. Uh, uh, does it kill EM EMC? Absolutely not. EMC is no. the Teflon gone yeah. of storage. I mean, I mean, nothing's going to kill these guys. Yeah. But, but Elastic File is a big play for their hybrid strategy. They Absolutely. Have to have it. They, yeah, they, they have, have, to have, have to have that. They yes. have to have it if they're going to move enterprise apps, migrate enterprise apps, or, or have them you know, span this boundary. They have to have that uh, file Absolutely system. Absolutely not. Yeah. And now they do. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think they need to add on to it? Do you think they're, how complete are you? Because you bring up a good point. That's a table stakes requirement for storage. Is the management software to be there? What's the other they, things they, that you guys need see? They need 10 years. Huh? They okay. need 10 years. Uh, if, if, if data is what you're protecting for your organization and it's your core. Amazon needs 10 years. You need to, <laughs> to develop, quote. you need to develop the confidence of the marketplace that you can look after the data 100% all the time. Would you EMC have earned that. Would you uh, agree with that 10 years? Us and the data being the key asset, that cloud will be a tough sell? I, I, I agree to a point. I think that people give the cloud a little bit more slack. And some of the, some of the features that you kind of get for free will, I think, make it easier for people to place their bets. Um, this, this service has to perform well. It has to have very few outages. But if it does, if it runs for, say, three years, four years, and it's rock solid, it's not going to take 10. It's going to take something less than we that. Well, you need we some debate. rapid innovation. It's going to take, right. we, 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 need, we, we can debate whether it's five or 10, but it's, it's but, not, but, it's but not I think a couple the, of years. But I think the number has yeah. been pegged on the cube, no, and we're no, going no, to say 10? The What's your number? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying six. Okay, I'm saying six, six and, and, the, and the reason why, there's a tipping point there, yeah. right? It's 10 for everybody, but it's six to say, you know what, game's over. The game's already over. Hmm. I, I think it's less than it's, six. It's long tail. I'll put my number out there. Got to you know, can't go over because that's you know, got one dollar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my number is going to be four and a half. I'll tell you why. <laughs> Under five, because Cloud Foundry and OpenStack will fumble along for a little bit longer. People are tooling up. I don't mean that in a negative way. Just inertia, inch by inch, and Cloud Foundry is putting a lot of pressure. Cloud Foundry with IBM, Cloud Foundry with HP. If the muscle can get with the brain tissue and move, then you might see pressure for Amazon to make that go faster. So to me, the only thing that's going to make it go less than 10 and around the 4.5 would be pressure on Amazon to specifically build better stuff faster on that one point. 
it takes time. It, it yeah. will take time. It will take time. They will, they will sell this service. 2019 and a half. They will sell this service at a price that will just blow away all enterprise storage. That's the problem. All right, final. They're going to be hugely disruptive. In that sense. Final comments. Wrapping up here. Awesome day here in the queue. We had awesome guests um, from Splunk, the data scientist guy at Amazon, uh, Mr. Wood. Guys, Amazon, winning, outlook, feelings. I'll start. I think Amazon's awesome. I think they're the gold standard in cloud, and I think they are the tsunami of innovation that is disrupting and destructing business models at the same time innovating and lowering costs. That is an amazing formula for innovation and the only thing that's going to stop that is the seawall of the incumbents in the market to protect their own lives. And that's going to be how far Amazon will take in the enterprise will be a function of the other players. I've been saying that for two years, I, say, I keep on that. But Amazon is a force in the enterprise. They're professionalizing their stack. They're adding the, the table stakes, the low hanging fruit and adding in the white space, there's still a lot more work to go, but clearly winning, and I see HP really has to step up their game. IBM has got the messaging all tight, I think. They just got to run faster, pedal faster. So, and then Oracle, Oracle I think is going to have a formidable, they got Sun, they got some integrated systems. I think Oracle might be the wild card here, and I think VMware is the, the granddaddy of them all, the chess player in Pat Gelsinger. I would look to see for some savvy moves by VMware because they have leverage. They got the virtualization infrastructure and technology and the incumbent position. A Little bit more innovation opportunity than say Oracle which just has uh, market power. So that's my take guys. What's your take on the outlook of the on the, of the My of take AWS. is it's going to be very interesting to see what Google does. I think, I think Google is at risk for missing the boat on enterprise completely. Right, they, they sort of, they, they, they uh, they sort of play around in it. They're not serious. They have this partnership with VMware. VMware's driving that. Google's not. Um, I think Google is, is going to, at some point in the next few years, wake up and say, we lost the enterprise business. We can't get back into it. So uh, my take is that Amazon has done fantastically well. It's gone after the low hanging fruit. It's chopped it all off. Uh, it's now going to take a little bit of extra effort and extra investment to get the ladders to go up into the trees and get the, the bigger fruit, uh, the ones that the, the, the animals uh, uh, can't get easily. Yeah. Uh, that's going to take some rocking and tackling and they're going to see uh, an increase in costs and uh, an increase in uh, resistance from the enterprise. So I, I think we're at the starting to see a little bit of the uh, curve. The, the mature AI, curve for Amazon? The mature, I mature don't, curve. I think it depends, I think it's yeah. just which curve you look at, I think it's going to be a kick up. So uh, that's, that's my view and I think uh, Microsoft is in the best place alongside them to put real pressure So your point, on competition yeah. has been watching Amazon, it's not a free ride. No. I mean they're out there just having their way with the market at the, at and everyone's been, like hey. They have been, but as they go deeper into yeah. the enterprise, so it becomes I would think more that's, of a battle. I like your I have very good insight. Competition's mm -hmm. not standing by with their hands tied behind their back, uh, blindfolded. Yeah. VMware in particular, IBM not. Also, VMware could make a move with Google. I mean, I joked earlier, but that's an interesting play. Google has to wake up. Google yeah. has no enterprise presence, but VMware does. And Google's got developers with Android, and they got Transit. And they want to do cars, and they want to do more ads. They want to, Google just doesn't have a focus in this area. The other wild card from uh, Floyd, Google's from Plain and, uh, Plain and Report, yeah. just yeah. notified on Twitter, I just saw the tweet. Um, IBM's advantage is it's also enterprise credibility relationships and services. So he brings up a good point. Services, yeah. that's muscle too. Yeah. IBM has got services. Yes. I mean, that's a great way to keep a client locked in throw bodies at it. So, you know, yep. Amazon doesn't have a lot of service. Mm. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Thank you so much. I want to also thank Mark Farley for an amazing uh, time, first time on theCUBE as a co-host. Good job, oh, it was well a riot. done. It was a riot. You were great. Hey, now, we're going to rock and roll. Yeah. Oops, there goes my uh, microphone. David Floyd, hey, obviously Cameo, doing the flyby at the end for the wrap up. Um, great job, guys. Thanks to the crew here. Great job at home. And hey, thanks for everyone watching. Stay tuned, we'll be back at, uh, where are we next? Uh, we're at London, tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be uh, live in London. Um, we've got ServiceNow, we got OpenStack, IBM Vision. Oh, Tuesday Mark Logic. It's Cube time, baby. We'll see you next time. <laughs>